The University of Pittsburgh ETD Word Template uses styles to control how headings are created, how text is formatted, and how captions and other references are controlled by the document. To get started, I recommend turning on several features in Word that will help you edit your document a little bit easier. The first thing is the paragraph marks function. By clicking this icon, it turns on spacing and other formatting characters that are hidden that allow you to see why something may not be appearing the way you want it to. The second thing you should check out is the Styles pane. In Word, the Styles pane is located in the Home ribbon. However, you can open it up and see more styles that are used within the document to control formatting. If some of the styles you are being asked to include are not being shown, you can use the Options key to understand which styles are actively being shown. Here you can set it to recommended, all styles, in use, or current document. The next thing you may want to turn on, but this is just a preference, is to under the view tab, you can turn on the navigation pane. Sometimes this helps you to jump back and forth between sections. It's not a requirement when editing a document, but it might make your life a little bit easier. So let's get started editing the document. The first thing to understand about styles is that it changes whatever line the cursor is inserted on. Uh, also, any text that is connected to that section uh, by a paragraph return or other functions of Word. So for instance, if I wanted to add another section to this text, um, we've created several heading levels that allow you to change the way the headings are styled and create the bookmarks for them. So if I wanted to add a section here, we'll call this section B, and I wanted it to be underneath this first heading level, I use heading 2 because this is in the hierarchy of, of where the headings are located. Um, and I can either do that by hitting heading 2 first and then typing the, the title or typing the title and then hitting heading 2 once the cursor is on that line. If I hit return, it automatically formats to normal formatting, which does include a half inch indent. So you should continue editing your document using these heading levels. And as you can see in the navigation pane, it is generating a numerically uh, sequential order for the headings, and it will adjust that as you go. Now, if you wanted to update your table of contents, you can see now that section I added isn't here yet. It's not automatic. You have to go back through, right click on the table of contents, hit update field, update entire table. And this will allow you to then pull any new headings and any content you've changed into the table of contents with the associated page number correctly formatted. You do not need to manually edit the table of contents. And the same can be said for the list of tables and list of figures and any other list you might create. Those are all controlled by Word, so all you need to do is apply the correct style within the document and right click on those uh, fields within those lists to update them. So let's go down and take a look at how to add captions to an image. When you insert an image in Word, especially within the template, it applies whatever the normal styling is for that section. Because we have a half an inch indent, I'm going to reapply this as if it was first copied and pasted within the document. As you can see here, this has a half, in, half inch indent, and you may not want that when you're editing and uh, adding your captions to your images. So the first thing you should do is hit no indent, or if you feel more comfortable using the ruler at the top of the page, um, you can simply click and drag this away. Now, this makes the image left aligned. You can leave it either block justified, left aligned. You could leave it center or right, whichever you feel is appropriate, as long as all your images and tables uh, are consistent within that uh, item type. It should be fine and be approved. Uh, I tend to like my images centered, so I centered this image. And I'm going to get rid of the caption we have here as an example and show you how to best add a caption. The easiest way that I find is to right click on the image, hit insert caption, 
and then you'll be seeing the caption dialog box which allows you to choose several things about your captions uh, for now I'm just going to paste in what I just copied out of there you can just hit OK and it will add the figure one and then you can type after that and that will be fine much like a heading it takes whatever text it finds after the number that it's inserted and will update it to your list of figures or list of tables however I'm going to hit OK and you can see now that this is formatted the line with the proper spacing and font size and it's bold it's also centered and you can tell by the little icon here that this is a reference line or caption that will be referenced in another field you can also highlight it uh, and click and drag over the, the line and you can see that the one has a slightly darker gray color to it this means that that is the number that word will if needed uh, change according to whatever figure number it is in the document if it's in position the first figure in the document it'll be a one if there's something else you add before that that will then change to two um, you can edit anything around that one and it will be reflected within the list of figures or list of tables so let's move down to the table tables can be a little finicky in word and you have to be mindful of how they break across pages but if you just want to add a caption the easiest way to do that is to use what I call the control box here you right click on that and hit insert caption you'll see the same dialog box that you had for your figure and you need to go and select the label type select the, lab the label type of table and you'll notice that the position is by default set to be above the selected item uh, this is something that the guidelines specify however if you talk with your student services representative you may be able to uh, allow them have them allow you I should say uh, have your table captions below if you feel that's a necessary style choice you want to make appendices are created using the appendix style for the heading uh, an app section and app subsection for the subsequent sections within your appendix. Um, these should are styled to mimic headings one, two, and three. Uh, we don't have headings uh, for for our styles for headings of level four within the appendix. Uh, but if you need that, you can ask us, and we will try to help create that within your particular document. Uh, figures and tables within your appendix. Uh, can use the same sequential numbering from the rest of your uh, figures and tables within your document. However, if you would like to have them numbered in a different way uh, or reset the numbering, uh, the easiest way that we found to do that is to create another uh, caption label called appendix table or appendix figure and then have Word apply that uh, and it will restart the numbering and you can add that to the list of figures or the list of tables. Now we have already created a separated section here. Uh, not to go into too many details, but Word does not allow you to pull two different label types into one single list or, or uh, list of references. So you need to have what's called a continuous break separating uh, the two different lists. So we've already done that in the template and if you're not going to be using a, a different label type, you can simply delete those lines and they'll go away for you. Uh, after you do your updates within your sections. So let me edit one of these titles just to show you um, several things here that are happening within the appendices. Uh, so for instance, this table one, um, we'll go back here. Um, let's say I wanted to add something to this caption. So it's captions go above for tables, but this uh, can be changed and I go back to my list of tables much like we did with the table of contents you simply need to click on that right click hit update table update entire table and you'll see it pull in the changes to that name um, you may have noticed in this paragraph mark uh, label I have done something called a, a style separator now this comes in handy when you're trying to add a rather lengthy caption um, to your figure or table that you don't want to have appear in the list of figures or list of tables. So what you can do is paragraph return, hit return once after the end of where you want it to appear um, as a slightly different style in your list. Then you need to make sure you 
click and drag over that particular um, section of text hit caption description which is the style we've added or any other style that's not caption we find it's easiest to use caption description because it matches the styles of caption now on a PC you simply need to insert the cursor in the original caption line you hit control alt and enter uh, this inserts a style separator now if you're using a Mac this won't be possible that's because the word for Mac client does not have style separators. The way to do it on a Mac is to then highlight just that paragraph return mark and you go into your font styles and hit hidden as a hidden character for that paragraph mark. Um, it will make it hidden within the final PDF that you make, however, it will still appear that there's a paragraph return there. It can be a little confusing. It can alter some of the spacing uh, that you're dealing with while you're making the rest of your edits to your document, but that is the only way that we found to make that work uh, within the template on a Mac. So as we go down a little further, let's get into our bibliography section. The heading for bibliography is just heading, and that is basically saying that it's the same style and it will be treated the same way in the table of contents. However, it's not numbered sequentially. If you're using a citation management tool such as EndNote or Mendeley or Zotero and you can export a citation list or reference list, you can simply put that uh, in this section and format however you want it to be formatted when you take it from that client. However, we do have a style called Bibliography Entry that you can use to style all of your references into what the recommended style is for the ETDs. You can, however, use another style as long as you're doing it consistently in following some style guide within your own uh, discipline. So now that you have all these edits made, you need to go back through, make sure everything seems to be way, the way you want it to appear. Make sure to update all of your table of contents, list of tables, and list of figures, and then go through and double check all the preliminary pages and all the information that's there. Simply fill in the information that's being asked of you. If you have a question, you may want to reach out to your student services contact or ETT support for more help um, in filling this out for the particulars of what's required by your school. Um, some areas are drop downs that you can use to pick from a list of predetermined uh, choices that we've entered into the document to make it a little easier to get it just right the first time. If this for some reason isn't functioning in your template, you can simply delete that line and type it in manually. Use the same font that you find in another section there and it should be fine. Um, on the committee page, be sure to select a thesis or dissertation. It can only be one of the two. And fill out the copyright page, fill out your abstract page. This should all match the information on your ETD approval form and the information that you'll put into the scholarship a bit later. However, make sure that your abstract is only 350 words. It cannot be larger than 350 words. It will be returned if the word count is higher than 350. So at this point, if you've done all your edits, you've updated your pages, you've updated your table of contents, you've checked all your references and citations, you're ready to save. The easiest way we found to save with the most recent template is to just go into File, Save As, and when you come to the dialog box here, choose the file type of PDF, then go into More Options. This may be slightly different on a Mac, uh, however, you want to make sure you go into options here, check that create bookmarks using headings is selected. This will allow you to use all the headings you've just created to create bookmarks in your PDF and we'll take a look at that in a second. On a Mac, it should say something about uh, standard publishing or electronic publishing. If it just says print publishing as a PDF, it won't create the, the links in the document for your bookmarks. Make sure you save as a file name, such as your surname, uh, ETD, maybe final, 2019, or something of that nature, so it's easier for your approver to know which version of the document you're working with. You can submit a draft for them to provide feedback on, 
However, it may be easier just to keep a, a similar uh, naming convention as you go through and make different versions. So as you hit save, it automatically creates the PDF and you can then go through and check uh, the bookmarks have been created. If you see these lists of bookmarks, you're doing it right. And you have to make sure that they go to the correct page. So click through uh, on the table of contents, make sure that these are all linked and functioning properly. The same goes for the list of tables, the list of figures, uh, and so on and so forth. You may want to go through and double check that everything looks to be aligned properly and if anything looks odd in the PDF because sometimes when PDFs do the conversion, you may see things change a little bit. However, at this point, you're ready to submit to D Scholarship and have your school look at it for approval. Uh, we will link uh, where that can be done to the guide on what to do after you defend. However, if you need any more help or any more questions you would like to ask, feel free to go to etd.pit.edu slash help. And you can use the form there to ask us a virtual question or check out the hours for our walk-in service where we'll be there to help you create your final ETD so that you can graduate. Thank you for joining me.